Hey, welcome back to another Welcome to Wednesday. Cameron here. I'm Nathan. This is not Jay. No. <laughs> yes. And announcements for this week. Ilya, who wrote Room for Love, will be at our other will be at our mothership doing a signing from six to eight. Comics experience on Divisadero Street. 305 Divisadero Cross Street page. In San Francisco. California. Yes. I don't know the zip code. United States Earth. Yes. Um, and that is our announcement for the week. So here are our number ones. First number one this week, Just League Gods and Monsters, Superman. This is a really good one. Batman came out last week. Batman was a little bit dark and a little bit gory, but this one was a very fle a nice fleshed out story of s this Superman who's the progeny of Zod instead of uh, Jor-El. And they take a somewhat different tack because instead of being raised by the Kents, uh, he's raised by undocumented migrant workers in the United States. So it kind of calls into question some of the ideas about, you know, the purity of the American dream and sort of takes a different angle at, you know, like, what if Superman grew up with these experiences? It's pretty cool. And given the fact that the Gods and Monsters movie may be, like, hyper-violent, if you haven't seen it, it came out yesterday, um, it really, like, gives a very... It's a little more nuanced. Nuanced backstory to the whole Superman mythos. And then the next one, The Shrieking Man. It's about a guy who's small named Scott, which totally does not sound familiar at all. At all. <laughs> but instead of willingly getting smaller, he got bombarded with a whole bunch of rays, and he shrinks the seventh little itch every day. It's... I enjoyed it. I really liked this, like, first issue, because yeah. it's dealing with the fact that he's getting smaller, and how it affects his everyday life. And the narrative's somewhat non-linear. It jumps between, like, current time, where he's very, very, very small, and, like, back to, like, him dealing with initially shrinking and that whole process. So it's a, a fairly solid setup. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to see where it goes. Yeah. And then Hacktivist Volume 2. This is written by Alyssa Milano, if you didn't know that. And Alyssa Milano is actually a pretty good writer. Yeah, the first series was um, a bit of a surprise hit. Sometimes when celebrities write comics, it's looked at as, as more or less just a stunt. And It's often like, that's I'm a celebrity. Look at right. me write comic books. Um, but the, the first Hacktivist was, was a solid book, so it's cool that they're doing a follow-up. Yeah, picks up six months later, and a lot of things are happening. But well-paced, good book. All right. So since there aren't a lot of number ones this week, me and Nathan just decided to go with some of our favorite things for, since it's like halfway through the year. Yeah, a halfway point retrospective. Yay! I wish we had like a montage of like things that we like <laughs> did over the years. With cool theme music. Right? Um, but Mythic has been one of my favorites this year. I'm a big fan of like lore and like ancient like history, uh, ancient history, ancient mythology and stuff. And it's a nice amalgamation between that and, you know, myths and, and I spaced out, and I spaced out. Clashing it with science. Yes, clashing it with science. It's not even clashing with science because it's just the fact that science doesn't really exist in this, this world. Like, everything's based upon mythological things. Like, there's some guy in a chariot that's revolving things around the sun, revolving the world around the sun, or vice versa. Anyway. It's fun, it's innovative, and it's just, it's a fresh take on mythology, and I've <laughs> thoroughly been enjoying it. And number three comes out this week. So, Secret Wars is pretty much dominating, you know, mainstream comic sales at the moment, and if I had to pick one of the countless tie-ins uh, that are affiliated with it at the moment, it would probably be Thor's. Um, Thor's is a lot of fun, it's being written by Jason Aaron, who's the guy who's been writing Thor for the last couple years now and just kind of killing it across the board. Uh, Aaron's been on fire He's lately. been amazing. He's been totally um, amazing. And he has not slowed down any all. amount on Thor's. Yeah. He, he's, he's kept it up with this, which is a, a really, really fun take. Um, because in in the world of Battle World that, that Secret Wars takes place in, the Thor's are essentially the police force. So it's a police procedural with Thors. All of the cops are Thor. So if you like procedurals and you like more Thors than you can shake a stick at, this is the one for you. There's even a group Thor. And so there's a Thor for everyone. Which yeah. Thor are you? And Thors 2 comes out this week also. Also this week. Another one. 
Injection. I'm a Warren Ellis slut. Anything he writes, I'm just all over. And Injection, he's definitely just having me slutting it up some more because I've been enjoying this so much. Um, it's a bit of a mystery to as what's happening in this world as of now. But with issue three, you start to find Things out. Things start to pick up. It, it hits a lot of the typical Ellis beats. There's a, a grouchy, crotchy protagonist. There's a blurred line between science and magic. And he doesn't really bother to get around telling you exactly what's happening until a little ways in to give you time to sort of get to know the characters and get a feel you know, for, for how, how they are and their motivations. So when things do start happening, uh, there's weight to it. it. It's just a really good formula, and he's, he's knocking it out of the park with it again. Help Us Great Warrior. <laughs> Help Us Great Warrior is, is a great, tons of fun book. It is, uh, was originally a webcomic uh, on Tumblr by Madeline Flores, and getting it, see, seeing it get the, the full comic book treatment is pretty exciting. Uh, Great Warrior is a, a hero in a, a world of fantasy and magic, um, although her favorite things to do are lounge around and eat pizza because any, any, any right-thinking living being understands the merits of that. Um, but when push comes to shove, she will pick up her sword and save the world and her friends from what evil, whatever, whatever evil might come their way. And then Bitch Planet by Kelly Bitch Sue Planet. Uh, technically, this started at the very end of the year last year, but we're going to give it, give yeah, it a little like, bit of a pass. Yeah. Um, this is just, in my opinion, probably the best, coolest thing that's happening right now. Uh, it takes the uh, women in prison exploitation genre and kind of turns it on its head by telling the story from an intersectional feminist perspective and really kind of deconstructs the genre. And there's just a lot of really great, like, um, you know, analysis of character archetypes. And, and things like that, and it really breaks down a lot of like complex social interactions into something that's also just crazy entertaining. It's a great book. Probably, probably Kelly Sue DeConnick's opus. All right, going along the, going along down, going along down, going down memory lane for the past year of like amazing comics that half. have come out. Half, half year. For 2015. For 2015. So far. So far, halfway, <laughs> where we are. Yes. Uh, we have two graphic novels, and they are both set in San Francisco, surprisingly. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, the first one is Wobble Oaf, which is actually written by Ed Lu Luce, and he's actually a local artist, and it's quite the gay, quite the gay <laughs> graphic novel. Um, but, you know, it gets all the nuances of being, you know, gay and awkward and burly and hairy. Some things that I'm totally not, but also... I resonate with this book, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's a nice, fun... Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, it's like, it's I laugh. Fun. It's goofy. It's just, like, goofy. out loud laugh reading it, it. It's gay and goofy. So if you like gay and goofy, like, graphic novels, this is what you should be reading <laughs> now. And then our... Probably, it's probably one of our, like, it is our favorite. They're not like us. If you come into the shop, neither he or I will stop yelling at you about it. It will go on forever. Yeah, most people that come in the store <laughs> were like, hey, you should pick up this book. Hey, you should pick up this book. Because you you should. Because it's based in San Francisco. It follows a girl who's a telepath, and she gets inducted into this X-Men-ish sort of environment. But, you know. And it, it uses that sort of like familiar idea in comics for us to sort of break down the ideas of, of youth culture, because it's about a bunch of kids who voluntarily separate themselves from the rest of mainstream culture and and the ways in which that's a positive thing for them and the ways in which it's a, ne in which it's a negative thing for them and it's a really fair analysis of of really being young you know it does, it's not condescending but it's not you know overly praising uh necessarily either and it's just it's a really smart uh really really like like fair analysis of those ideas and it's a great book and it also really like certain nuances of living in san francisco it gets it and i thoroughly enjoyed that fact like just the little things like having like the muni depots like <laughs> drawn into because usually most things in San Francisco doesn't look like San Francisco ever. It's right. Just, if you, if you're familiar with the city, if you live here or have lived here or visit a lot, you will recognize every street in these pages. It, it really really does a good job of bringing the city to life. So, thank you for tuning into another week, and thank you Nathan for stepping in today. 
Yay! Yay! <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so, once again, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for our future videos, hit us up on our Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, or Facebook pages. Did I say Facebook twice? You said Facebook twice. Said this is on YouTube. They could comment on the YouTube video. You can comment on this also. YouTube, you YouTube comics are, comments are a horrible and terrifying world, but if you want to say something They're to horrible. us there, we will, we will see it. We'll see it. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, have a wonderful week, and we will see you later. Bye.